Georgetown. We made it. <laughs> yeah, it's starting already. <laughs> we are standing right here because we got through this together. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, lots of hoops to jump through, but we did it. And we did it by doing what we do best, and that's staying positive. Getting through this point, to this point of our journey lets me know that we can conquer anything that comes our way. Nothing will stop us. When we first started dating, we would talk and laugh for hours. We never get bored. And I know that we'll be doing that 50 years down the road. You just have so much love for everyone, especially your friends and your family. The love for your mom is so beautiful. And your dad is looking down on you right now. Kyle, I have always believed in fate and that with patience and an open heart, God will bring you what you are searching for when the time is right. We were always friends, then one night you gave me butterflies in my stomach and that feeling never went away. You lifted me up when I needed you the most. You showed me what true, unconditional love was and carried me through my hardest days when I lost my dad and my honey. My dad asked you to take care of me and you asking for his blessing was one of the happiest days of his life. By coming here today, Joe and Kyle, you have reached a crossroads in your lives. You are turning away from your yesterdays, and you're looking ahead to your moms. It's no longer Joe's future, it's no longer Kyle's future, it's Joe and Kyle. I've had a privilege over the last, oh, almost eight months now, when we spent Christmas together, you gave me your dad's Bible. The two people that are here today that are, are here today, but they're not, their presence isn't here. There's an empty seat for both of them. One is our dad, and Kyle's dad. So I've been reading, since my dad's death, the Bible that I gave him when he placed his faith in here. And I've been reading, since Christmas, your dad's Bible. 
One of the things that uh, my dad was 75 years old, so he was an older man when he came to faith. And so when I read his Bible, I see a guy looking over back over his life. Then I was reading his Bible one morning, and this piece of paper fell out, and it was in, in uh, the book of Malachi. My dad had written a note on it. He said, <clears throat> this one gets me really bad. We, and then he put our names down. He said there was part of him that felt like that he wasn't the best father he could have been as he looked back over his life. Malachi ends this with, he says, so guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith. My dad would tell you, as I think he told me as I'm reading it, don't make the mistake of not getting, giving yourself completely to one another. That would be my dad's advice. Your dad underlined everything that I could find about marriage and love in the New Testament. The part that he underscored the most was the husband's responsibility to his wife. This is what the scriptures say. It says, husbands, love your wives. <clears throat> Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of the water through the word, present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle, with any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Everything you do from the here on in is for John. This, this is what your life is about now, her. This is the life that you have now chosen and going to commit to God in front of these people. I'm living my life for you, John. First time anywhere, and now everywhere, Mr. and Mrs. Kyle. Fire in my bones, in my soul, can't control. Reach higher, thank you, Lord. Grab my soul, it's time to go. I put on truth and grace, like what pain I proclaim. I'm good on all the lies. Recognize my battle cry